Let me just start, okay. Oh. Okay. Do you have the the, the text? Can you see the text? <clears throat> Do you have? I'm sharing the, the text. Do, can you see it? Okay, so uh, this text is about silicon nanoparticles. Uh, how do they prepare them? Uh, what about their properties and the applications? So you have two terms in the title. Uh, this is um, a review, which means that all the main um, idea, all the main, um, uh, you know, the main progress in the field is put here in this review. Uh, that's why I have chosen to. Okay, so the topic is about silicon nanoparticles. You have two terms: silicon first and nanoparticles. What do you know about silicon? As physicist in matter science, what do you know about silicon? And um, this is um, a lesson that is supposed to be um, interactive between you and me. Okay, you are supposed to practice. You are supposed to, um, to 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 answer my questions and so. Okay, so what do you know about about silicon? What is silicon? They don't make semiconductors with it. Actually, it is. Yeah, Katya. Okay, it is. It is a semiconductor. What is a semiconductor? Um, what do you mean? At really low temperatures, all the, the materials are supposed to be conductors, Katya. Maybe. Yes, yes. Insulating. Isolant is insulating. Insulators. Okay. So it's not that. Um, you have the two properties, you are right in that sense, but it is not an insulator uh, at zero Kelvin. Because at zero Kelvin, um, what happens in matter? All the others are supposed to answer. I'm asking the question to all of you. If I am at zero K, what is supposed to happen? Okay, uh, which particles? Yeah, these are atoms, right? Okay, so uh, which kind of motion? No movement, no motion. Which kind of motion? What is the type? The question that I'm asking is what is the type of motion inside matter? Solid. 
yeah it, it's a, it's a solid but kind of uh, of motion do you have in matter uh no no asia asia you can just uh answer uh, okay oscillatory movement yes yes ramsey very good oscillatory uh, movement oscillatory motion these are vibrations vibrations of atoms among their equilibrium positions right right or not yes so um at ambient temperature atoms are vibrating among their equilibrium positions okay and um when i say ambient temperature this is supposed to be around 300k okay and if i reduce the temperatures this vibration will be reduced okay and if i send electrons if I send some uh, information with an electron, this electron will not encounter difficulties to transport this information from one place, let's say one point A to the other point B, okay? And these are uh, actually superconductors. The, the, the conducting current is depending on temperature for superconductors. This is not the case of semiconductors. For semiconductors, these are used in uh, so many fields. And the main field semiconductors are used in is, is what? Can you tell me? Can you answer this question? This is your last year as um, uh, students in physics. So you are supposed to know so many things. You are supposed to, uh, to have some culture about um, how we use matter in physics and uh, about the fields. In IT, so uh, Asya said in IT. What do you mean, Asya? Asya, can you turn on your microphone, please, and answer? Or do you have some difficulties with your microphone? Uh, hi. No, I actually don't have difficulties with my phone. Just didn't want to talk. Yeah. So, in uh, information to telecommunications. Yeah, very good, very good. Uh, this is a field. There is another field that you are supposed to, uh, to be uh, interested in. What is this field? Another field? Uh, yeah, yeah. Interface and surface solids. Uh, okay. Um, uh, physics, uh, interface and uh, surface physics. For, for the whole planet, there is a field uh, that is supposed to be very, very, so interesting and so oh, important. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, solar energy. Solar energy uh, uses mainly how? So when I say solar energy, Katya, this is um, this is to say that if I want to use solar energy, I'm using solar panels or solar cells and these solar cells use semiconductors okay so can you explain how as a physicist this is your last year in physics and you are supposed to know so many things you know you are supposed some things that are related to um solar energy renewable energies and so okay so in for solar energy they use solar panels Solar, solar panels are made of solar cells and these solar cells work with semiconductor, are made of semiconductors. So what is a semiconductor now? Now you, you, will, you will be able to answer my question. How do they work? Can someone answer? All of you are supposed to answer, please. Do not hesitate. They work with P and junction, like uh, with uh, electrons and holes of electrons, electron holes. Right, right, very good. Yeah, yeah. Can you explain more? Electrons and holes and so, um, there is something. Uh, the, main, the main phenomenon is that 
these solar panels are supposed to receive what for working? Photons. Yeah, yeah, right. So if I go to the atomic scale, there is a macroscopic scale uh, for these solar panels. And what's, what's going on at the microscopic scale? At the macros microscopic scale, you have uh, photons, okay? So the electron will absorb photons. They will eat photons in order to be able to do what? In Katya, we are explaining how solar panels or how semiconductors work in terms of matter, in terms of uh, material science. So you have solar energy, you have, uh, let's say, uh, light, this electromagnetic uh, wave that will strike uh, uh, the, the panels. And um, at the moment this, this light strikes the panels, something will happen at the microscopic scale. So photons will be absorbed by electrons. And then... Uh, right, right. Zero. Yeah, they start moving. But... Okay, yes, Katya? Yes, but before before that, um, you have a, a very a specific property of semiconductors. If I uh, if I have a look at the energy of these semiconductors, so the energy will be divided into three bands. Three bands. Can you guess? So along the y-axis, you will have energy in electron volts and along the x-axis you will have space let's say just space so you will have three bands three bands let me let me draw okay uh manage so if i have energy along the y-axis this is the y-axis and this is Energy. Energy. Okay, that will be, and here you have space with some symmetry axis. Okay, here you will have three bands. Can you see my drawing? Okay, here you will have three bands. Here you will have the valence band, let's say V for valence and B for band. So, initially, all the electrons are supposed to be here, okay? And here you will have a gap for saying that this is a space that is strictly forbidden, okay? Here I have a gap. And this is a space that is strictly forbidden for electrons. No electrons will be able to occupy this space, okay? And here, you will have the convection band. This is how all semiconductors work. So, excuse me. Okay. So, I repeat. V for valence band. C for convection band. And here, this is a space that is forbidden for all the electrons. Initially, before having the light, before having this electromagnetic wave, all the electrons are supposed to occupy this space. And once, one electron eats a photon. I will say between brackets, eats a photon. Electrons will absorb photons and that way they will be able to jump from the valence band to the conduction band. Once they are in the conduction band, you will have current. They will be able to conduct electricity, okay? They will be able, for instance, to transport heat, to transport current. Okay, for heating or for uh, 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 for electricity, and that way, once they have these photons, they jump from this band to this band. Okay, this is an energy that will enable them to go to the conduction band, and you will have electricity for any any goal. 
you like. So, mainly, this is how all semiconductors work. Okay? Is it okay? Yes. Okay. So, what happens for metals, just to make a difference? For metals, you have this energy band. Okay? Okay? And for metals, the valence band is like this. And the conduction band is like this, mainly. So, no difference is metal. So, electrons um, have no problems from, of course, of course, when I say electrons, even for here, when I say valence band, uh, do you have an idea about why it is called valence band? Why is it called valence band? I repeat, you are supposed to interact with me. You are supposed to answer my questions, please. You are supposed to practice your English. So, um, this is physics, but of course, this is English. Why is it called, uh, why is it called um, uh, valence band? Because it's the stationary uh, state of the, the atom. No, no. Idea. Valence. What does this mean? When you say valence band, valence. You're supposed to think of what? When you say valence band. Yeah, brilliant. Valence electrons. Valence electrons, and these are called outermost electrons. Okay? Uh, outermost electrons because the bond between these electrons to the nucleus is not strong. So, you have uh, the closest shells, you know, you have the structure of the atom. I will draw something just to remind it to you. I'm sure you know it already. So, um, if we recall, what is the structure of... If I draw something, um, unfortunately, I have no space. So, let me just draw it here. And I don't want to open another sheet because it will... Uh, here okay this is the atom okay this is the nucleus right and these are the closest shells the closest shells are very strongly bonded to the nucleus and in no way they can leave the nucleus, okay? You have to provide um, uh, uh, very significant energy to sleep in the, uh, the, the atom, actually. And here, these are the outermost. Outermost means um, um, the outer shells. They are not very strongly bonded to the nucleus, and they, mil they may leave, okay? These are if I have electrons here, they may leave easily their atoms, okay? And actually, in a metal, these are, um, uh, uh, these electrons, to, uh, the, 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 the current conduction, they contribute to everything, okay? These ones are considered as a part of the nucleus. And this is called, actually, if I go to the structure of your atom, this is the core. Okay, why the core? Because you have, write it properly, the core, like the heart of the atom. Okay, you have the nucleus here and you have all the closest shells to this nucleus and in no way their electrons may leave. And this is 
why it is called the core, the, the core of the atom. Okay, uh, so the electrons of, of, of the core will never leave, and these are the valence electrons. These are these electrons that will contribute to the current convection. That's why energy about the valence band. Okay, so the valence electrons are here. If I provide some photons to my system, they will go to, 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 to the conduction band. Is it clear? So that is how it works. So mainly, if you put in a, uh, in a, in, in a in photons inside a metal, the reaction is not the same. This is why semiconductors are required for um for solar panels okay do you see the difference between a metal and a semiconductor can you see the difference yes okay so um so now uh what are the semiconductors the natural semiconductors in the periodic table Sil sil silicon and germanium. Yeah. Silicon and? Germanium. Yeah, mainly you have silicon and germanium. If I, uh, we have already talked about the structure of these elements. So, uh, if you have a look at silicon, how is it? We have already talked about that. If you have a look at silicon, how is it? Is it like a metal? Please, you are supposed to interact with me. Uh, on, uh, just at the microscopic scale, if you touch it, for instance, it is like what? Sure, a metal a metal is also solid, but if you can you compare the two, it's a rock, a crystalline rock. It's like a quartz. Yeah, very good. It is. A, it, it has a glassy, glassy structure. It, it it looks like a glass. Okay, it looks like a glass, and it has the same properties as uh, glass, which means it is very hard, very hard. Uh, very strong, okay, but in the same while it is fragile. If you drop it, it will go into pieces, okay. So uh, both silicon and germanium are, are um, uh, have glassy structures in terms of structure, whereas a metal is uh, bright. You can you can deform it in some cases, okay, and uh, this is the main property of silicon. So. Uh, if you, we, we go back to the periodic table, you have two semiconductors, mainly two semiconductors. You have silicon and germanium, okay? And you have also carbon. Carbon, in the sense of structure, it has many, many, many common properties with silicon, okay? One day we will talk about carbon. Now, uh, for this solar energy, you know, and for these uh, solar panels, you have many generation. You have the first generation that use that used to use uh, wafers. Wafers means uh, these are almost two D systems, and you have the second generations. Uh, second generation, uh, they use films. Okay, and these are not really two D systems. Um, if we compare wafers to uh, to these films, say that wafers are um, are uh, are three D systems. If you compare them to sh to, to to films, uh, did you hear about films? If I say a film, a thin film. This means that you have a substrate. A substrate like this and here you have your semiconducting film so this is really a surface uh, but not in it to the systems it is very very thin 
okay um, if i of this film it is uh, uh, some atomic shells just some atomic shells okay these are 2d um second generation let me just write it this is a second generation okay of semiconductors that are distinct to solar energy so first generation is a uh, wafer and uh, second generation are thin films of semiconductors third generation what are the third generation uh, you have no idea i think for the third generation you have nanoparticles you have nanosystems okay um if i say nano of course the length scale is is If I say nanosystem, so uh, ten to the to the minus nine to the minus yeah, there you go. So, okay. hey, nanosystems. This is ten to minus to to minus. Excuse me, nine meters. And these uh, new systems are now used for solar energy. We will uh, see how. Now going back to silicon nanoparticles. Someone wants to read start uh, uh, first before reading i would like to ask how do you like this topic are you or do you prefer to go to another topic it's interesting uh, yes ramzi what about the others i would like to have your uh, opinion what about the others how do you like this topic it is interesting. excuse me it is interesting okay fulla okay yes so for for said yes okay if you all like this topic we will uh, continue on this topic okay okay i'm reading uh, the comments so uh, many of you likes uh, like the, the the topic we will carry on on this topic um, I should add uh, why I like this topic personally because it is very used in uh, medical physics silicon nanoparticles are used in medical physics uh, in diagnosis uh, in imaging in um, even in therapy okay for uh, for modern countries unfortunately uh, not in Algeria so uh, these silicon nanoparticles present uh, even silicon at the, the macroscopic scale present um, a main property what is the main property of silicon do you know it there is a main property uh, of silicon that makes it very 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 interesting and um, that makes of silicon a modern topic uh, that have made i should say of silicon uh, a modern topic during uh, many decades it is it is remaining uh, a, a, a very modern topic what is the main property of silicon do you know it as a student, third year student, this is the, the, your, your last year, for some of you, of course, this is the last year, uh, your last year in physics, and you are supposed to know this main property. What is this main property of silicon? In the abstract, what did you notice without going back to the abstract? Of course, Lina, um, please remind me to send you this review. Um, I invite you to read it, to try to understand it. And uh, that would be, uh, I think, uh, the topic of the final exam. Finished all the lessons. So, do you have an idea about the main property of silicon? At all the scales, macroscopic, microscopic, and nanoscale, what is the main property of silicon? I think you have done some, uh, uh, yes, 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 yes. I'm sorry, um, you haven't started in, in studying solid state physics. Do you have some solid state physics, Lina? 
solid state. Uh, no, I think it's uh, second semester. Second semester. Ah, okay. So uh, you don't know it. Okay, okay. I will go back to the abstract. Someone wants to read. We will talk about this property. Someone wants to read, please. Your English, please. Okay. We will read uh, this abstract um, maybe two or three times, and we will go to explain and to talk about these silicon nanoparticles. Please. Please, you are supposed to interact with me. Katya. Okay, start reading, please, from the title. Okay. And try again, and try again, and try again. Thank you, Katya. I need another student to read. You are reading and you are trying to understand. Your brain is compiling all this information and we, I will uh, ask questions. So, Fulla, Fulla, do you want to read? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, introduction with the rapid development of nanoscience and no fulla 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 please we are just reading the abstract ah, the abstract okay okay, uh, okay. silicon silicon nanoparticles preparation properties and application applications uh, silicon nanoparticles yeah. have attracted have attracted great attention in the past decades because of their intriguing physical properties Active surface state, distinctive photo lumini photo luminescence, photoluminescence, photoluminescence, and biocompatibility. In this review, we present some of the recent progress in preparation methodologies and surface functionalization, fun functionalization. Um, approaches of silicon nanoparticles, further their promising application in the fields of energy and electronic and electronic engineering are introduced. Thank you. Someone wants to read for the last time, please. Uh, can I read? Lina. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, silicon nanoparticles, preparation, properties, and applications. Silicon nanoparticles have attracted great uh, attention in the past decades because of their intriguing physical properties, active surface state, distinctive photoluminescence, and biocompatibility. In this review, we present some of the recent progress in preparation methodologies and surface functionalizations, uh, approaches of uh, silicon nanoparticles. Further, their promising applications in the fields of energy. Promising, and promising, promising. Uh, promising. Applications in the fields of energy and electronic engineering are introduced. Okay, thank you. Let's start with the first sentence. So, uh, I think that um, the, the, the title is clear. If I asked you how many authors are there in this contribution? There are two. Just two authors. What are the authors' affiliations? Where, where, where are they from? China. Yeah, they are from China. And you know that uh, now China has become um, a very developed country and uh, it is 
it is almost uh, at the top okay in um, at the top not in in, in science but uh, uh, when you say uh, knowledge when you say uh, power power you have two uh, you have two 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 contributions to power you have knowledge and science and you have also on the other side what do you have Can you ask? Can you can you answer, please? So, two main parts contribute to power. The first one is science and knowledge. On the other side, what what are you supposed to have? If I say power, what do you have on the other side to balance between the two? Excuse me? No? Yes, money. Money comes first. Okay? Money comes first in the sense that if you have knowledge, if you have science, uh, you can have what you want. But if you have no money, you cannot go very far. So, for that, they... Um, um, uh, uh, now the first country in computer science okay because they can provide money for improving the machines okay they can provide money for um in, uh, for uh, progressing in any field of science and it is now uh, in the top even when compared to japan when compared to the united states when compared to germany um, for, for knowledge and science, uh, they are not that uh, developed, but for money, they have money and they can go very far. Okay, so that's why I have chosen this review. So we will uh, explain silicon nanoparticles have attracted great attention in the past decades because of their intriguing physical properties. And now, if I say intriguing, what is the meaning of intriguing? yeah yeah brilliant can you give me some other synonyms do you have some other synonyms bizarre excuse me ramzi what did you say bizarre uh yeah 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 not that bizarre you uh, we will see okay but but it is a synonym of intriguing full up fascinating yeah fascinating okay full do you have a synonym I said fascinate. Ah, okay. I thought it was Lina. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Brilliant. Fascinating. Excuse me. Interesting. Yeah. Um, interesting is is not uh, that adequate. Okay. So when I say it is intriguing, it is fascinating. Fascinating. It is, um, uh, Ramzi said, bizarre uh, in, in the sense that um, when you have it at the, the first time, at the first glance, it is, it is not understandable. You, you, you need to think of it in order to understand. You need to, you need to, uh, to, to, to make some investigations in, in order to, to, to understand this phenomena. Okay, so... Intriguing physical properties, and they understand. Uh, they, they explain. Excuse me. Active surface state. Okay. What does this mean? Active surface state. And this is a property. This is a property uh, that is um, uh, that is valid. Let's say for uh, all the nanoparticles. What does this mean? Do you have an idea? What do they mean? So, I will 
explain, I think that you have no idea. And in order to gain time, for not wasting time, I will explain uh, um, some of nanoparticles. So, um, do you know, I don't, I think that last year, uh, we didn't have time to study nanoparticles. I think that uh, I didn't say anything about nanoparticles, or did I? Can you remind me? Ramzi? Ramzi or Lina? No, we didn't. We didn't do anything about nanoparticles. We didn't have time for that, I think. Right? Okay. Lina, what did you say? I didn't hear you. Uh, I said, yes, we didn't do. We didn't do anything about nanoparticles. So, um, draw something. This is my nanoparticle. Uh, I think that I have, um, I have talked about the importance of uh, time and length scales in physics. Did I? Did I? Can you remind me? I'm asking you, please, please. The importance of time and length scales in physics last year. Yes. Okay. So, if I have um, a macroscopic system, any macroscopic system, it is governed by some uh, laws, okay? Uh, for instance, in classical mechanics, you have some laws, you can, uh, it is governed by, uh, 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 by some forces, by some energies, and I can, I can understand uh, the, 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 this system, I can understand the, the physics behind this system just by writing some Newtonian laws, and I, I can I can go I can get the equation of motion, and so and then macroscopic scale and um, use classical mechanics to understand the behavior of the system. Now, if I go deeper inside matter, okay, I reach the nanoscopic scale, and now at the nanoscopic scale, so. If this these are the length scale, here I have the first scale, macroscopic scale, and here I have the microscopic scale, and here I am at the nanoscopic scale. This is the nanoscale. Okay, between the microscopic scale and the nanoscale, you have, sorry, you have here a boundary. Okay, between, before the starting of the nanoscale. When you go to the nanoscale, the physics governing the system is quite different from macroscopic and microscopic scale. And I will explain why. Okay, so the physics governing nanoscale systems is quite different. If I go deeper, I am here in this range, I am at the nanoscopic scale. If I go deeper, what do I have here? We have talked about that. So this, this is the length, length scales. If I go deeper and further to, uh, from the nanoscale, what do I have? The micro, microscopic scale? No, no. Microscopic is here. When I say macroscopic uh, for the length oh, yeah. scale, yes, yes, it is meters and uh, it is meters and um, and seconds for the time scale. Uh, for the microscopic scale, when I say microscopic, the, the length scale is micron. Okay. Now. All right. Yes. Okay, this is not microscopic. Uh, the, uh, what we, we have already said that for the nanoscale, this is ten to minus to minus uh, nine. Now I'm, I'm I'm going deeper. It is much smaller than the nano scale. What do I have here? As, excuse me. Ramzi, I told you. Fermi, 
What do you mean by Fermi scale? Fermi, 10 to, excuse me? I couldn't hear you. A plane is passing uh, <laughs> over my, my, my house and Pico, uh, it is much smaller. So uh, Hannah told me uh, Pico scale, no, Pico, Pico, it is 10 to minus, 10 to minus, if, if you say Pico, 10 to minus, so Fermi, 10 to minus 15, Pico, 10 to nine, minus, 12, yeah, yeah, Pico, 10 to minus 12, just that, just that. Uh, 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 I just wanted to hear that from you. Okay, to my drawing. Here, boundary, and um, you can see, maybe it could start, it could be, yes, the Pico scale, it, it could even start earlier. These are the quantum scale. You will have quantum effects, okay? Quantum effects in physics. I have already talked about that. Uh, in order to uh, give you an accurate order of the length scale, I will ask another question, and uh, I'm sure you know. Uh, at which scale will quantum effects start? The extra. Not the angstrom. Uh, I'm asking, at which scale quantum effects will start? If you say quantum scale, we are at the quantum scale. But at which scale? Exactly. When the dimensions, the, start. When the dimensions yeah, of the yeah. body we're studying is comparable to the, to the wavelength. Yeah, brilliant, Ramsey, brilliant. I have already talked about that. So, the quantum effects will start once the size of the system or the distance between particles becomes comparable to De Broglie wavelength. De Broglie wavelength. So, before that, uh, Lina or Raouf, uh, did you think of saving this lesson in order to share it to your classmates? Uh, I can't, I can't uh, recall. You cannot save. Um, okay, okay, okay. Very good, Katya. Thank you very much. And so um, try, try to think, to share the lesson to your classmates who, who could not connect. Thank you so much. Okay, because I forgot to remind it to you. So, to this uh, quantum effect in physics, um, quantum effects will arise once, once the size of your system or explain why I, I'm talking about that, because it is important for this review. So, quantum effects will start once the distance between particles or the size of the system becomes comparable to De Broglie wavelength. De Broglie wavelength, in French, it is De Broglie. Okay, you have already seen it in chemistry last year, right? Right or not? Uh, in quantum mechanics. Yeah, even in chemistry, I think that um, um, yeah. in the program of uh, when you were a first year student, I think that they have already uh, told you about this double wave wavelength. And if you have already seen it in quantum mechanics, it's, it's great. So, it's nanoparticles. So, nanoparticles, how do you define a nanoparticle? This is my nanoparticle. What do you have inside it? If you say nanoparticle, what do you have inside it? It is very simple. 
Yes, Ramzi. Elementary particles. What do you mean by elementary particles? Like uh, the composition of the the particle we're studying. Um, it is not clear. I will give you the answer. So inside it, I will have atoms. So nanoparticles, if I want to define what is a nanoparticle, it is an aggregate of atoms which are bonded together, okay? I will explain how we form nanoparticles. So here you have atoms and you have atoms. And it, is, it could be made of um, three to uh, hundreds or uh, millions of atoms, okay? Provided that the size of this nanoparticle will not exceed some nanometers. So here you have atoms, okay? It is not that easy to, to draw. So I think that you have understood. And here again, is it clear? So this is an aggregate of atoms that all that are all bonded together. Uh, I will explain. So the, the easiest way to form this, um, you take to explain this. For instance, here I have a bath uh, of um, any element in the periodic table. It is a liquid. It is a liquid because the temperature is uh, greater than the melting point. Okay, and I will increase the temperature. I will heat up the system. I will increase and increase and increase until I will have a transition from which state to which state. If I have phase transition, here it is liquid. If I heat up and then increase the temperature and increase and increase, what will I have? Gas. A gas, okay. So, this system will evaporate and I will have some vapor here. And, of course, I am heating just here. Here you have um, a temperature gradient, okay? The system will uh, undergo a um, 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 decrease in temperature. So, so, what are you supposed to have? Uh, this means that the atoms are separated. If the temperature will decrease, what would happen? I'm asking you, please. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. That was the answer I was expecting, okay? A condensation. A condensation means that the atoms will come back together. Okay, because it is a gas, but the temperature is not that high, far from the bath. Okay, so there will be a condensation, and here you will have formation. Because atoms will come back together and form nanoparticles. Okay, and I will put something here. Uh, one day I will explain it to you. I will put a filter that will allow all the particles of a certain size getting out from this system and here i will pick up my required nanoparticles they will have uh, they, they can made uh, they can make particles of any size they like okay but for um, you know for uh, handling nanoparticles you need to 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 be very very developed in science okay not any country can uh, can can work with nanoparticles so this is how we make nanoparticles. So this is my nanoparticle. Let's say it will contain something like um, 200 atoms. So here again, you will have the core. I have the core of the nanoparticle. And here you will have the surface atoms. Okay? For these surface atoms, if I compare the behavior of an atom belonging to the core and another atom belonging to the surface about the behavior of the two atoms. 
Can you guess? Here I will throw. Here you have any atom of the core. And here I will draw also the behavior of surface. In terms of bonds, let's say silicon. Silicon is uh, tetravalent. Tetravalent, this means that four valence electrons. So this silicon atom, this is um, a schematic representation of it is tetravalent. Tetravalent, this means that this silicon atom can can have one here one here and one here okay if i have if i have a look at the core i will find that this silicon atom is bonded to another silicon atom here and to another silicon atom here another silicon atom here and oh sorry here so all the bonds are let's say occupied so this silicon atom is very very stable but if i represent schematically an atom belonging to the surface it may have okay it may have a bond here it may have a bond here but here you have what they call a dangling bond because i'm sure you will read this term a dangling bond dangling bond how do you spell it d a n l i n g means a missing bond missing bond means that this atom is very unstable and this is a very interesting property. So I can use some other atoms of the periodic table, namely carbon or hydrogen, for instance, to uh, what they say, passivation, okay, to saturate this bond. And this dangling bond will change, will change the physics governing uh, not only for silicon um, will change the physics governing any 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 nanoparticles of uh, elemental particle when i say elemental i, I think uh, of the fact that it is not alloyed um, for instance uh, aluminium nanoparticles gold nanoparticles gold nanoparticles are also very used because uh, very interesting because they are very used in treating cancers okay so here at the surface, I have some dangling bonds, some missing bonds, and this property is very, very interesting. Um, I will ask another question at the copic scale. This question, in order to make you understand the meaning of these dangling bonds, of these missing bonds at any surface, Let's go to the macroscopic scale. Can you tell me the surface of water? Let's say if you go to the sea, uh, the surface sea or of a glass of water of uh, water. Let's say just water. Why is it? Uh, how how it, how is it? Let's say I will ask before. I prefer uh, I prefer you to answer. How is the surface? Let's say a glass of water. How is it? Are you here? Okay. How is the surface of any liquid? Not wasting time, I will represent. Here you have 
a glass of water or in any liquid, the surface is flat. Right? Flat. Why is it flat? I need to explain that in order to explain the behavior of any nanoparticles. Any nano, na, nanoparticle, excuse me. So, why surface of this liquid flat? Do you have an idea? This is physics of life. This is physics you are supposed to listen to. It's because of uh, the, the interaction forces between the, the molecules on the surface and uh, the ones uh, uh, under them. Um, this is not that clear. Can you explain more, please? I, I mean, uh, the interactions between uh, the the molecules on the surface, the first yeah. and la on, they interact with with the ones uh, under them. So, uh, <coughs> all the forces are uh, are directed to down. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Why? Why? This is correct. This is brilliant. It's because of the electrons. No, no, not because of the electrons. So, let me explain. Just... Oh, I'm sorry, my phone is ringing. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me explain uh, the importance uh, of this uh, dangling bonds. Okay, so here, under the surface, all the atoms, what I was explaining, here, under the surface, all the atoms are bonded together, okay? All the bonds are occupied or busy or uh, uh, as you like okay but on the surface all the atoms of the surface uh, present some missing bonds right right or not so they are they have bonds here okay they have missing bonds on the surface so all the atoms of the surface will try to closer to the other atoms in order to not leave the surface so so they will they will uh, they will um, exert some um, some forces that will inside the liquid okay in order to not leave the surface so the interaction forces if i represent schematically all the atoms of the surface will exert forces that, let, let's say, downward forces, like this, okay, in order to not leave the surface. And if I pay attention to this surface, it will undergo forces that are directed downward, okay, and that way this surface will become flat. This is why all the surfaces are flat. So we have explained the behavior, a macroscopic behavior, with a microscopic behavior. Okay, when I say microscopic this time, uh, I mean uh, at the scale of the atoms. Is it clear? Yes. Okay, so I will go back to these nanoparticles. So the behavior of nanoparticles is the same of, because of this missing bonds of the atoms belonging to the surface, okay? And this behavior make, uh, makes the, the nanoparticles very interesting for many uses. 
what they mean by active surface state. So you can do with this uh, with these atoms what you like, what either you like, okay, what even you like. It, uh, do you understand? I will explain something. For instance, if I if I take uh, bark silicon, the melting point is at 1000 uh, almost 1500 uh, celsius if i take nanoparticle or if i take any like i have explained any surface of silicon the the, the the melting point is much below of the bulk okay because it is easy to strip these atoms to my system and this is the meaning of active surface state because of this missing bond. Is it clear? Do you Can have you any... uh... Yes. Uh... I did understand the last thing that you said. Okay. So. If I have a bulk, I mean a 3D system, okay? Any massive piece, let's say aluminium, okay? And that I heat it, it, it will present a melting point. For instance, for aluminium, it is um, around 700 Celsius. It will start melting above 700 celsius because it is a bulk now if i take any surface point will be lower than 700 celsius why because i will this is my surface all the atoms belonging to the surface strongly bonded to the system so they will start to leave the surface because of this missing bond. Uh, is it clear? So, if a bulk silicon will start melting at 700 Celsius, uh, a surface will start melting maybe around 600 missing bonds. Um, this is a weakness if I, um, if I talk about the melting point this is a weakness because they will leave the surface before say because in the periodic table um they they, they, they indicate the melting point uh, of aluminium let's say 700 around 700 but if you take a surface it will it will be lower of any surface is it clear yes okay so what about the others okay so uh the behavior of nanoparticles is quite similar to that of uh surfaces but So, in science, they use behavior to get, uh, to improve or to, um, to get profit from some properties. So, it distinctive photoluminescence and biocompatibility. What is photoluminescence? So, uh, I have asked a question. What is the main property of silicon? And the main property of silicon is photoluminescence at all the scales, okay? Uh, at the macroscopic scale, when it is a, a massive system, a 3D system, uh, when it is a thin, a thin film also, when it is a 2D system, and also at the nanoscopic scale. So photoluminescence is the main property of silicon. What is photoluminescence? Into me, what is photoluminescence? Light emission, yeah, yeah. 
but how? Um, Can you explain? Are, Just me? Some, some electrons are excited and then when they come back to their uh, initial state, uh, they produce a photon. Yeah, yeah. But before, uh, okay, that's right. But before being excited, this, this is an interaction with light. They are excited be, be, because before that, they had they had absorbed some photons okay so these electrons because it is a semiconductor these electrons because they belong to a semiconductor this is not the behavior of any metal okay so they absorb um, once they are put in front or uh, uh, in, in interaction with light they will absorb photons okay they will go to a, a, an excited state and if they come back to their state, they will emit light. Okay, so it is photoluminescence. Photoluminescence means uh, light emission or just photon emission. Okay, so this is photoluminescence biocompatibility. What does this mean? What do they mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Biocompatibility, this means that it is um, quite compatible with the human body, with, 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 any, uh, with any living body. Of course, before trying on human bodies, they try on animals, okay? So, uh, these silicon nanoparticles present a biocompatibility. So, um, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't result in any damage, okay? In any damage, uh, if it is introduced, it, it, if it is introduced in the human body. Given you an example, um, I have talked about this property when we started the, 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 the lesson. So, if I say photoluminescence, uh, how can they use them, for instance? And this technique is used in Algeria, already used in Algeria. I will just uh, ask a question. Um, did you hear scintigraphy? Scintigraphy in imaging. Okay, what about the others? Okay, this means uh, no. So they will inject inject silicon nanoparticles inside your blood. Okay, so these silicon nanoparticles will uh, will move inside your vessels, okay, and they will emit light in such a way to show uh, the state and um, the topography of all the vessels of your body. Okay, I will uh, explain it in French because because it is so important. Et ils, ils injectent alors pour certains types de radio et pour voir la topographie de tous les vaisseaux, les vaisseaux bien sûr les vaisseaux sanguins. Ok, ils injectent des, 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 des nanoparticules parce que c'est le plus photoluminescent et en interaction avec la lumière, ces nanoparticules vont, vont, vont briller. Elles vont scintiller, d'où le, 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 le terme scintigraphie. D'accord Et donc, elles vont montrer la topographie de tous les vaisseaux. Donc, la topographie, alors, c'est de l'imagerie médicale, bien sûr. Et donc, euh, il, tous, les, tous les vaisseaux sanguins qui sont dans votre corps, ils vont émettre de la lumière. Et, et, et donc, de, de ce fait, ils peuvent détecter s'il y a un caillot, s'il y a un vaisseau qui, qui ne fonctionne pas normalement. D'accord Vous voyez, c'est de la physique pure. Do you understand? Yeah. So this is uh, very interesting. It is um, also uh, used in uh, 
uh, in what they call theranostic. Okay, I will uh, teach you a turn. Maybe you know it. Theranostic. So, T, just to show you the importance of the silicon nanoparticles, T, H, E. A N O S. This is S, okay. I could use the chat, I know, but some sometimes it doesn't work with my computer. Theoramostic. Do you know what does this mean? Did you ever uh, hear about this term? No. Yes, I'm listening to you. Theranos. Oh, I, I, I don't know. Okay, okay. So, if I... This term, you have thera for saying therapy and gnostic for saying diagnostic. So, you have two operations in the same while. Um, unfortunately, it is not used in Algeria. It is used in, uh, it is used in very developed country. So they use silicon nanoparticles for and for therapy in the same while. When you have a cancer that is, um, uh, um, that is at a, a very developed state, very advanced state, and that when, when you need to, to, you have no time to lose. When, because human lives, are depending depending on you actually okay so they they send uh, silicon nanoparticles inside the body in for diagnosis for detecting uh, tumor uh, cells okay and also for treating them for killing them diagnostic this is uh, an operation that combines two operations therapy and diagnosis okay is it clear and this is done with silicon nanoparticles just to say uh, to explain at which extent this biocompatibility is um, is uh, let's say uh, um, this is amazing okay can you imagine with just silicon nanoparticles you will detect the tumor cells you will uh, you will um, we treat the cancer in um, in just a few weeks, okay? If uh, with another technique, with radiotherapy or chemotherapy, it may take some long months, okay? So, do you have any questions about that? These are the main properties of silicon nanoparticles, and this is why it is so interesting. This is are the main properties in medical physics, because. Um, for me, this is a very personal opinion. Um, nothing could be more important than human lives. Because the use in solar energy, in electronic engineering, in microelectronics is also uh, amazing. Okay. So, do you have any questions? No, it is already uh, it is already used maybe uh, since a decade ago, but in very developed countries, in very developed countries, because it requires very sophisticated means. Okay, uh, that we don't have unfortunately in Algeria. It is already used treating cancers with nanoparticles with silicon nanoparticles, and before silicon nanoparticles we had gold nanoparticles. But you know, if I say gold, pure gold nanoparticles, gold gold is um, is very expensive. Okay, the price of gold is much uh, the cost will be much more important than that uh, of using uh, silicon nanoparticles. And using uh, gold nanoparticles is not alone, it is with lasers. Okay, so um, the cost, you have to afford for that cost actually, okay? Uh, so it is not used, but it is used, it is currently used in Germany, for instance, or in Japan, or in Russia, or in, in any developed country. Why? Uh, I will just ask you why. 
For instance, if you use uh, chemotherapy, chemotherapy uh, means that you will introduce drugs through the blood and the blood will go uh, to all the organs everywhere it will touch it will affect all the organs of your body but if you use um, nanoparticles you will target you will target the tumor okay and this is why um, at, at the first glance if I say nanoparticles you will say uh, you, you may say uh, these are drug delivery systems drug delivery systems in French la victoris victorisation victorisation des médicaments victorisation ça veut dire qu'on envoie le traitement directement à l'organe qui est affecté d'accord alors que dans la chimiothérapie ou alors là même la radiothérapie qui est moins néfaste euh, elle crée des it creates it damages in so many damages to the human body okay whereas uh, nanoparticles go straight to the organ that is affected this is due this is due to this uh, active surface state you just uh, we, uh, we use this active surface state with this term functionalization okay c'est la fonctionnalisation des nanoparticules. Ça veut dire que les, 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 les liaisons manquantes, je vais les, 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 les mettre en contact avec d'autres éléments organiques, d'accord, qui vont se diriger droit à la nanoparticule. Is it clear? So, in this review, we present some of the recent progress in preparation, methodologies and surface functionalization approaches of silicon nanoparticles. Do you have any question for this sentence? Okay, thank you for uh, responding. Thank you for replying because I don't know what about the others, but okay. Further, this, they are promising applications in the fields of energy. Why in the fields of energy? I have already explained it. Yeah, for solar cells, but not any uh, solar panels uh, uh, for solar cells of the third generation, because third generation solar cells mainly use nanoparticles, okay, silicon nanoparticles, okay, and electronic engineering. Uh, why electronic engineer, engineering? Because uh, why? Can you explain why? Very good, brilliant. Okay, can you also explain? Can you add something? Because we are we are dealing with nanoparticles. Okay, these are nano-sized systems, right? What does this mean? This means that if uh, excuse me, yes. Uh, yeah, we can use this size, but before that, because we have nanoscale systems, uh, Katya, we have nanoscale systems, uh, and this explains why some years ago, a computer used, some decades ago, decades, like 50, years ago um, if I if I if I take a computer it it use it used to occupy a whole room and not not any room a big room okay in order to transport an information uh, from one place to the other they they, they required uh, a, a great space okay and then a computer became to uh, be, uh, started to become smaller and smaller and smaller until your smartphone your smartphone is nothing else than a computer you know it 
Yeah, yeah. And now you can put, you can just put your computer inside your pocket. And this is due to the progress of nanoscience. Okay. And this is the meaning, and of course, nanotechnology. This is the meaning of promising applications in electronic engineering. When you say electronic, it is uh, closely related to computer science, as you can know it, okay, as you already know it. So, uh, is it clear? Okay, keywords. What is the meaning of keyword? And um, um, I have already explained that, I think, uh, uh, last year, but maybe not to all the students. Okay, so what are the keywords? Uh, I have explained it to the students, section A and C students, but not for section B students. What are the keywords? The words that are most used in the, in the topic. Excuse me? The words that are most used in the topic. Uh, not that, not that. A word is a word, it is not an idea, Katya. Right? And in that sense. Can you carry on? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening to you. Uh, if you have a project like, like you did last year, you are preparing a project and you need to perform some research. Uh, you go to Google and you need to type some words in order that Google, Google gives you uh, the, 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 uh, the articles and the sites that are related to these words. Okay, when you say keywords, key means that these are the words you need to type in order to start that project okay so anyone anyone that uh, that has to prepare a project like you did last year just like you did last year needs to start with keywords okay and then you have all the contributions of course scientific contributions that will deal with those keywords okay that's why they call them the keywords Okay, so keywords, silicon, of course, nanoparticles, quantum confinement effect. <clears throat> what is this quantum uh, confinement effect? I think you didn't hear about it, but um, you have already talked about it when we started. You have... Uh, the electrons will leave the shells, okay? And once they have left the shells, they will create, can you repeat it? You have already told it. Yeah, they will create electron holes. So I will just uh, represent it schematically. So. I have, oh, I'm sorry. This is the balance band. Let's say it is here, okay? I have an electron that was here, and this electron oh, to the conduction band, okay? And here you have in dots. Uh, uh, here you have the hole, okay? And you will have, oh, I'm sorry, a formation of a pier, okay? A pier, let's say, of particles. You have, and you have the hole, what that represents. And if, if the size of this system 
is smaller than De Breuil wavelength. Going back to this De Breuil wavelength, okay? You will have here a formation of a Bohr exciton. Okay, Bohr last year. Bohr, like Bohr atom, okay, but now it is not an atom, it is an exciton. Okay, this is I, O, N. Ce qu'on appelle l'exciton de Bohr. L'exciton de Bohr, c'est une paire d'électrons trous dont la taille est comparable ou juste inférieure à la longueur d'onde de De Breuil. Et à ce moment-là, vous avez des effets quantiques et des effets de confinement quantique. Et ces, ces effets sont très, très, très importants en électronique et pour l'utilisation le, le, de ces nanoparticules de silicium. Ces effets quantiques, vous les trouvez dans les nanoparticules de silicium. Vous pouvez aussi les trouver dans le, le silicium poreux qui est formé à partir de nanoparticules de silicium. Et c'est des effets qui sont utilisés, euh, alors quand je dis l'échelle est, est, est tellement petite, c'est des effets qui sont utilisés euh, notamment en microélectronique. D'accord Is it clear Quantum confinement effect. Is it clear Okay. And optical performance. Why optical Because of uh, transparency. It's me. It, uh, it the transparency. Uh, it doesn't absorb light. Yeah, but when you say optical, these are all the properties of light. How light interacts. This type of matter. Okay. How does it absorb light? Uh, Re-emit uh, light. Okay. These are optical properties. It do this, uh, how it goes, what will absorb light in order to go to the conduction band, how it will re-emit light. All these are optical properties. Okay? Yes. yes. And these optical properties are mainly related to this photoluminescence. Property of uh, of silicon. Do you have any questions with regard? Are there any questions with regard to this abstract? So, someone wants to read, starting from the introduction, in order to practice your English, please just in order to practice your English. And wants to read, please. Sure, if... Uh, no one else wants to read. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. From the title, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, nineteen uh, nineteen
try again lee Thank you. Walk to read a second time. Does someone want to read? Because while you are reading, this is the simplest way to make you practice your English. Okay, because you don't answer the questions and uh, in, you're not interacting with me. And so I need you to read. Full luck. Can you read here? To read. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Um, with the rapid development of science and in a real field, nanomaterials have attracted ex extensive attention. Since the discovery of the red-orange fluorescence from electrochemically uh, etched nanoporous silicon SI, silicon nanoparticles in Heavy metal free nanoscale silicon has been investigated in depth of its unparalleled uh, physical and chemical properties, such as feasibility uh, for surface expansion and functionalization, uh, size dependent multicolor light emission, stability against photo bleaching, and intriguingly favorable non toxicity, which has been reported to be 10 times safer than those of chemicals in vitro. So super superiorities open a new avenue to the application of SI nanoparticles NPs to energy source electronic sensor catalyz catalyzes and biomedical uh, purposes. Catalysis. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, what is the main idea? The importance of uh, of nanoparticle silicon nanoparticles. The importance of silicon nanoparticles. And what? Their applications. Yeah, the applications. Uh, as we have already mentioned, the most important field is. The biomedical? Yeah, biomedical uh, applications. Uh, it, it is the most important field, actually. Okay? So, to this introduction, with a rapid development of nanoscience and nanotechnology in multidisciplinary fields, nanomaterials have attracted extensive attention. Give me synonyms extensive. Expanding. Expanding. Uh, not important. You have already seen that term, I think, last year in thermodynamics. No, no, it is not extended to, when you say 
um, nanomaterials have attracted extent. You cannot say, can you say I have a, an important uh, in, in that field? You, you don't say it actually. Okay, that's why. Yes, when you say large, I agree with you. Okay, um, large, but we don't say large attention. Okay, so can you give me another synonym, please? General, not general, not at all. Okay, can you give me another synonym? Yeah, yeah, considerable. You can just say great, a great attention. So extensive. Oh, sorry. means great attention, wide attention, large attention. Okay? This is not interesting. This is not general. This is not important, excuse me. Uh, not general and not also, what did you give me? I don't recall. Uh, you can say significant also. Is it okay? Can we go to the next sentence? Okay, this is the discovery of bright red orange fluorescence from chemically uh, etched nanoporous silicon, silicon nanoparticle thin film, upon UV excitation in 1990. So, can you imagine? It is as old, let's say, as old as and as early for the developing country is 1990, okay? It's because, uh, Katya, you asked me, is it in uh, or just a theory or just um, an, an, an investigation? And I told you it could have some decades ago. If I say, 90. How many decades do you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three decades. So they have discovered these properties and then they have observed these properties and then to apply them in different fields. Okay? So at the beginning, at the basis, in order to understand this property, what do you have? In order to observe, you have a basis, okay? That present this property. What is your system here? In some way, they are explaining the photoluminescence, but not any photoluminescence. So, this is red orange fluorescence. Means this is a very important property. As any, can can you explain to me? Excuse me, what is fluorescence? You know it, I'm sure you know it. Not. And it, it is not emitting light, it is bright. It is bright. For instance, you have pants, you have pants, uh, namely uh, the yellow color and the orange color. Okay, if you want to underline a sentence, I will try. Um, I noticed that it doesn't work anymore. Okay, you can uh, être en surbrillance. So it is not really, it is bright. Okay, what is bright? Brillant. Mettre en surbrillance, je vais essayer. I will try if it works, but uh, yeah, it is. This is what you do with your
right? Fluorescent light is bright on the, the batteries of the world. Of, of the you can see your purity, right or no? The difference between in, uh, fluorescence and please. Same. Can you repeat, madam? Okay, maybe my connection was bad. I um, um, did you hear uh, the explanation about? Uh, your fluorescent pants difference between did you hear the initiative? 